Hello and welcome to Icon Conversations. I am your host, Asa Laveau. This is to let you know or to remind you that you are at the right place at the right time for the right reason. I am ecstatic, enthralled, uh, enthusiastic about your ability and willingness to co-create this episode with us today. So yes, you may have never heard that. You may have once or twice uh, been view as someone who is just a listener, but I don't believe that. I believe that you are playing an active role in the co-creation of this episode today. If you are someone who is new to Icon Conversation, you're like, okay, so what's the deal? Is this just a podcast where everybody's just like big on themselves and like very ego-driven about who they are and how they're showing up? Yes and no. (laughs) The reason why I say yes if you don't think you are amazing, if you don't think that you are the bee's knees, if you do not think that you have something to give to this world that is beneficial to yourself and to others, how can anyone else do that as well? Because you usually for the most part are the teacher, are the shower of how people should treat you, how people should feel about you, how or how people could feel about you, if you don't offer them something in regards to what that could look like, what that could feel like, what that could taste like, then they may not know. And their their common go-to feeling or perception of someone is less than admirable. So we want to make sure that we are projecting how we desire to be received and valued in this world. And the reason why I say no, because (laughs) it's so not about the individuals that myself, Asa LaRoe, or the individuals that are coming on. I uh, am glad and honored that the individuals that we have are humans that understand that a lot of times it's not even about them. Yes, they did the work. Yes, they wrote the book. Yes, they built the business. Yes, they have the audience. And it's so not always about them. It's about who? You, the person that is co-creating this episode with us. So that's what Icon Conversations is about. And I understand you as someone who is in our audience and shout out to Icon Nation, to all the money cousins out there and everyone in that's currently in Icon University uh, because uh, Icon Conversations is a underneath the umbrella of House of Icons and House of Icons is where entrepreneur, entrepreneurs uh, can imagine, conceive, optimize and nourish their business aspirations in a way that feels good (laughs) to them and not as though they are a pest to the very person they pay or the very entity that they pay. So that's what this is all about. And again, very, very happy that you have chosen, made the decision to show up for us, with us, and for you today. Today, I am honored to bring on someone who is a fellow author. I love anyone who understands the publishing world. Anybody who has thought once upon a time, like, hmm, I wonder if that could be a thing. And then took that thought and persevered and dreamt and manifested that into reality so that you could actually one day hold it in your hand. My heart is with those types of humans. And today we have such a human with us. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you, Chris Felton. Hello, Chris. Hey, so what's up, my friend? How are you? I'm doing very well. So what part of the world are you in at the moment? Uh, uh, Castle Rock, Colorado. Castle Rock, Colorado. I've never heard of Castle Rock. Where is that? Is that a small place, a large place? Uh, it's big. It's getting bigger by the moment. So I'm about uh, 25 minutes south of Dem- Denver, Colorado. So. Oh, got yeah. it. So that- north, north of Colorado Springs, about 40 minutes. So right, right between those two very large growing cities. Makes sense. So with this icon conversation show many people have understood or learned that i like to dig into or not dig into but peruse around the inner workings of the person before we get into the business or the book or the thing that you built and one way is i would love to know when there was once upon a time a little chris when he was five or six years old what did little chris desire to become one day an NFL football player. Really? But 
I'm a slow white guy. <laughs> and uh okay. And I'm not very big and I can't kick. So I was pretty screwed. But anyway, I uh I love sports and uh st- still do still love what was all the sports. Al- what was the allure for you for be- wanting to become a football player though? Uh, you know, I I I wanted adulation and you know respect and you know i just uh those the 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 football players especially the denver broncos when i was growing up those Mm. were uh those were my heroes man so uh and and i loved uh basketball and i mean just you name a sport i i loved it and loved uh you know loved loved watching them and it's uh that that was that was it that was the deal how did you go from being little Chris to desiring to be, you know, Denver Broncos play football? How did you transition or progress to that idea, that desire into what you are doing now? Uh, I, don't, I mean, I'm 51, so there's a lot of, lot of ground to cover there. Um, but um, I mean, really, really my story, I, I went to uh, Colorado State university and got an accounting degree so i call myself a recovered cpa anyway it's it's a disease anyway (laughs) and uh first steps denial but but anyway no i'm just i'm just joking great great profession but uh, after seven years of being uh you know corporate guy i looked to the person that was 10 years ahead of me and i just didn't want to be that person so um not because they were bad but it was they made a lot of money but all they did was work their relationships were a mess their health was a mess. And I have a a tendency to uh, overwork if if I don't have, uh, you know, boundaries around me, or at least uh, self imposed limits I put on there. And so I started looking for an entrepreneurial business, uh, kind of in the late 90s, and tripped over uh, and started a financial services company, uh, part time. So I was working about 60, 70 hours a week as a CPA. And then I I was moonlighting and doing this about six to 10 hours a week. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. And then uh, left uh, that full-time February 2000 and kind of jumped in and was really bad at, the, at what I do and spent the first year talking to people out of doing business with me. And uh, and uh, um, and then went through a, a pretty painful uh, expensive divorce and my kids were one month old and three years old so they moved to Atlanta Georgia with their mom and then uh, my second current and last wife she's in the other room listening second current and last wife um, (laughs) walked into what appeared to be success my friend but it was uh, it, it was a financial crap show that was happening um, behind the scenes. So I pretty much laid down in the divorce. She got half the business. Um, I signed an office lease that I couldn't afford. And uh, so basically, I, I accumulated over about three or four years, $250,000 of credit card debt. Um, I uh, signed a 6,000 square foot office lease I couldn't afford. Um, and I was paying my ex-wife $5,200 a month. Uh, at the beginning of each month. Yeah, exactly. That, that Your face looks very similar to what my the faces my wife used to make at me. And uh, you're like, I can't believe I had this clown on my show. Anyway, and uh, so, so I had, so, and I'm a financial advisor and I'm a CPA and I'm totally freaking broke. And so my wife, uh, Marlo, luckily uh, wrestled control of the finances for the house and the business away from me, which was the best financial thing that ever happened to me. And kind of it came to a head when I was having to make that alimony child support payment the next day, $5,200. And I had no, no more places to borrow. We're in the middle of the great recession. So I come home, we're in a rented home now, and my wife, Marlo, is really good with money. And so basically, basically, I had to come home and convince my wife to give me the money to pay my ex-wife. And yeah. Yeah. And she's like five foot one and everyone's scared of her. And uh, I, I turned my head for a second and she has this purse. It's got like 20 pounds of crap in it, right? And 
I don't know why women's purses are so big. Maybe you've done a show on that. I need to listen to But anyway, but I turn my head and I see this purse come flying over my head. She got so pissed. She threw her purse at me. And then she didn't just throw it once. She picked it up and threw it again, picked it up and threw it again, and picked it up and threw it again. And then we were in the fight of our lives. And she just could not believe she married a guy who looked successful, CPA, financial advisor, totally freaking broke. And I'm like, well, if it's so bad, why are you still with me? Fair question. She goes upstairs to think about that the rest of the night. And there I was. And it was uh, it was uh, the turning point of my life because I looked at, um, you know, I, I, I went back to my first marriage and I'm like, huh, interesting. I actually expected that not to work out because, uh, you know, we don't get what we hope for. We get what we expect. And uh, a lot of people don't get that. They hope positive, expect negative. And so I'm like, oh, interesting. I sabotaged that whole thing. Um, my kids are little, I hadn't seen them in months, uh, tons of guilt there. The financial stress ACE is so bad that it's physically impacting my wife. Um, I'm drinking a lot every night and I just sat there and I said, well, the, co the common theme to everything here, there's one common theme, me. And that's when I kind of woke up and I'm like, going, oh, dude, you got to change. And cause your way is not working. And what was my way? My way is kind of the way of the middle class. I call it hopium. <laughs> that's so right? good. Right. Hopium. Right. That's living, so on, good. Li living on hopium, like hoping the outside world's going to change while I'll just stay the same. Mm -hmm. And I call that rearranging the furniture on the deck of the Titanic. It, it doesn't really matter. What I do to that furniture, the damn boat's going down. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to quit being delusion. One of my favorite quotes is optimism and delusion sleep in the same bed together. Man. And and that's our challenge as humans is we can get easily deluded. And I was totally deluded because it's a shit show. And I'm like, hey, Chris, how you doing? Oh, it's great. Things are awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right. And, uh, and so right then and there, man, I just, I'm like, dude, you got to own your stuff. You got to own your results. And it was really the first time in my life. I took a hundred percent responsibility for the mess. And so the next day, uh, we came together, me and my wife and to her immense credit, instead of focusing on the negative, she wrote down what she loved about me. And she said, don't want to live without that. And what that also did is that broke my self-sabotaging relationship pattern, which is I'd hit some bumps in the road with, you know, whoever I was with. And then I'd start focusing on their BS and their stuff, their negative, negative stuff. And then I had this delusion in my mind that there's just some, you know, uh, utopian unicorn relationship out there that's just going to be sunshine, lollipops, and roses, and there's it doesn't require any work. So I just kind of jumped around looking for that, and I was beginning to do that with Marlo, but because she focused on the good in me, it broke that. And then she said, we're not getting divorced. We're not declaring bankruptcy. We're not getting jobs. We're going to figure our business out. And she's like, I'm going to we, and so we had a couple of things going for us. I'm about to the end of the, of the story here. And then we no, you're good. It. Like, believe yeah. me, you are good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we had access to wealthy mentors. That's one thing we had going for us. And she said, I'm going to interview these people. And they had wealth in all areas of their life, not just monetarily, like every area, like world-class people. And I'm going to figure out what they think and what they do. And so we wrote a book uh, 12 years ago called Couples Money. Um, that we wrote so that so the so the book came out of that and then she was kind of like okay um you know what are what are you going to do and she kind of like had this big finger pointing at me going what are you going to do and i'm like i'm going to figure out how this keeps creating this and she's like well, what does that mean i'm i'm like i'm not interested in changing i'm committed and she's like what's the difference and as you know brother most people are interested. Yeah. 
um, so interesting. they're just interested. And one of the most ridiculous things that's been created in our society, and I think social media exacerbates it, is is people think they can get something for nothing. True. Mm -hmm. And so when you're interested, you'll hit some roadblocks and then your limiting beliefs, your past, your stories, your crap will start firing. And then you'll pick up and go to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and try a million things. But uh, unless you really commit to grow and change, it's not going to change. But I said, I'm committed. She's like, what does that mean? I'm like, you know how an Olympic athlete treats their sport? Like they're all in, like, there's no question they're freaking committed. And so I'm committed, I'm committed to growing and changing. And so I said, I'm, I'm up every day, four, four 30, five o'clock, whatever it takes. I'm going to read journal, visualize, uh, you know, whatever I pray. Uh, if, if, if my, I worked with a coach for four and a half years and if somebody would have said, Hey, you need to stand on your head for an hour. It's going to change your life. Like I, I would have done it, dude. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and I'm a big Mel Robbins fan. One of my favorite quotes yeah. of hers is, you know, it doesn't happen overnight, but it happens over time. And what happened to us is we had a jaw dropping financial transformation, uh, marital transformation, me, a spiritual transformation, physical transformation. I got more energy at 51 than I did at 31. Um, and, uh, everything changed. And, uh, I, I want that. I want that for people. I want them to have a transformation. Well, first off, if Marlo is listening, in fact, I just have to say my heart, my being, my spirit applauds the fact that you breathe on this planet. Like to be able to have as someone who has been entrepreneurial, well, entrepreneurial since I was nine, but an entrepreneur on paper, like secretary of state level. Um, since I was 22 and I'll be 40 in two weeks, being able, like I know that life of being connected to someone romantically that does not value where you're going in the world in a, in, in a business journey and to the point that they don't even want it. And then over time, they despise it and you um, as the reasoning why things are the way they are. So to have someone like Marlo, just from your testimony of her, I just really value what she was able to bring and her perseverance of love and seeing the you that you could not see reflected back to you yep. is huge. And that, ladies and gentlemen, and humans of the power of love, we can end this segment. <laughs> Amen. Like it really is. Like, I'm telling you, there's nothing like love, and especially love like that. So I talk to entrepreneurs often at conferences or over the phone, and we're, a lot of us are like, is that even a thing? Like, could someone who's not necessarily in business love us and our business or love us while we build it? Like, is that a thing? So thank you for telling the story because from how you, how you told it, it gives us a little shot, little high of opium um, in our sales about the possibility of finding that for ourselves. But with everything else that you said, I have so much to ask you, <laughs> so much because yeah, I have a lot to ask you now. Okay, but first off, let me just make sure that I'm completely clear to everyone that is under the sound of my voice. You have written a very dope book called Think and Grow You. And you, I, I guess I, we've all, I'm sure we've all gotten a lot from your story just now. I've gotten a great deal. Like I'll wake up at 3.18 a.m. tomorrow morning to go to the bathroom and I'm sure I'll remember something you said just now. Like that's how much um, I have received just from the story. Without having yet read the book, I'm a reader, so I will definitely make different to make a, um, a point to read it. But in your book, I do know this is you. One of the points of it is to assist people with getting unstuck. And you, in what you've told me, in every single what is that? It could possibly a choke point of your journey. 
That's a military term for those of you who never heard that, a point when you get to a, a section and something has shifted and you have to make a real life decision about what you're going to do to fix this. And you could have stayed stuck, but over and over and over and over again, by yourself and with assistance of others, you just kept unsticking yourself. Like, how did you do, what was, how did you do that? Yeah, how did you just keep unsticking yourself? Yeah, I mean, um, I, 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 yeah, I mean, so so the, the, the problem that the book solves is stuck and, and so the, the way the way you get unstuck is first you gotta you gotta humble down and and what happens uh you know especially especially us guys uh, we don't like to be told that we're not delivering and and so you know your amigo is not your amigo and and so and and so so the book is the book is about basically i mean it's 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 50 different concepts written very short uh format uh very like just e super easy to read very simple to read with some teaching and some quotes and some resources that i use to get unstuck and then it's my personal story behind each chapter and it's basically the, the every story is i was effed up i realized i was effed up I made this change and then I had this result in business, my relationships, my spirituality, I mean, everything, but, but basically the, the, the messaging. So the problem it solves is stuck. The messaging is we have to humble down and we have to be, uh, my coach that I worked with for years, he would, he would call me out and then, you know, our egoic, you know, emotion goes up, intelligence goes down. Uh, we get offended, mm -hmm. uh, you know, losers get offended. And I would, I would push back and then he would always snap me out by asking this question. He said, Hey, Chris, based on results, how is your way working? Hey, hated that question. And I've coached thousands of entrepreneurs and they know when it's coming because mm -hmm. they fight me. And I'm like, dude, I'm in your corner, dumbass. Like yeah. <laughs> base. I'm here, I'm here to, I'm here to help you move forward for your reasons, not mine based on results. How's your way working? So the first thing we got to humble down, we got to humble down. Second thing is we got to be willing to change and growth is not optional. And one of my favorite quotes is, you know, the, the masses in the middle class, hey, so they're addicted to comfort. And one of my first quotes in the book is from an author named Jeff Shore. And it, and it's, it says, a life spent seeking comfort results in an entirely uncomfortable existence. It's, I freaking love it, but people are addicted to comfort. And so in nature, trees are either growing or dying. They're not seeking comfort. And so by just, just by seeking comfort, you're actually in decline. You're in decay. And so if you aren't intentional about doing the work, you're in decay. The second part is you got to do the work. You got to put in the work. But then the fourth thing of how, this is how you get unstuck is you got to understand that the work is going to be worth it. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. They're like, well, what? I mean, I heard that Chris guy talk and I don't know. It, 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 are you sure? Like, what if I do all this and it doesn't work out? And, you know, and but I had so I had a couple assets going for me when my back was against the wall. That last one I had going for me because when I was in college, I started the habit of I'd, I'd ask, I'd run into successful people and ask them, was it worth it? Mm. I've asked hundreds of people that, and all of them were never confused by the question and they never hesitated and they said it was worth everything. Meaning everything they went through to live the life that they currently were living, the successful life, was worth every freaking everything they went through. So I bought in that if I did the work, and it's a law, if I planted the seeds, the crop would come. I just needed to not be a dumbass and move the farm after I planted the seeds, which is a lot of people do. They quit, they pick up, they go. Yeah. So be humble down, be willing to change, do the work. The work is going to be worth it. Now, your last point about the work being worth it. I find great value in that. And the reason why I find great value in it is in the age of 
IG entrepreneurs, um, I have found that when you ensure or understand that the worth the work is worth it, it allows an, uh, the ability to get back up. So I say, understanding the work allows you to be very, um, now the word is just, it's resilient. That's the word, resilient. When you are someone and you're like, all you have to do is this, 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 and this, 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 and that's what I did. And it always worked and it never was a problem. Or even you frauded yourself to a particular stage. And I have seen that I have done appointments with people for their agencies to help me and mine. And I would go back and I would ask them, you know, I see that you have like all these different news publication icons on your site and I've been in some. So I know I'm very, very upfront. Like, no, you can find, here's the link to that particular show or article. And I don't see any of yours. And they're like, oh, we made that up. I mean, what do you mean you made that up? And they say, oh, we made it up. Because people don't care. We just put it on the site. And then, you know, six months later, I'm seeing them being broadcast over multiple social media accounts saying that they made their first million at you know 27 and all these different things. But even though I don't desire anything negative on them, I don't. But I'm like, what's gonna happen when you come to my age and you're about to turn 40 and you've never experienced anything to keep you at the location where you're now residing? That's my thing around making sure that the work is worth it because it allows you to solidify yourself and cement your space in the success that you're living consistently, or even if it's not consistently, you know how to get it back. Yeah. And that's why I love that particular statement that you gave, for sure. Well, that's a house of cards. Like, I, I, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's nuts. Um, yeah. <laughs> what you just described. I mean, that's a freaking house of cards. I mean, that's, that's inauthentic. That's, you know, yeah, I can't, I, I can't believe people do that well, they do oh they do yeah, <laughs> and, they're, and they're very upfront the book. That's now nuts. one now one quote in your book and I, i've very i've been transparent i have not read the whole thing but i've definitely skimmed through a little bit and one thing that you say one quote in the book is we are all a miracle and a mess at the same time now when i think about miracle now i grew up in the church both my parents are pastors i'm very understanding about a miracle and 20 years in the military, I definitely understand messes. Basic training allows you to identify a mess completely. So when you say you can be both at the same time, please elaborate on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, one of, one of the things that I, I bring out in, in the book is, you know, pe people are so freaking hard on themselves and and they, they beat themselves up and, you know, it's there's this thing like, okay, once I'm perfect, then I can be happy. Or once I have this, then I can be happy. And, you know, one of my quotes is there's no happy ending to an unhappy journey. Right. And, and, and you, you just, you can't keep delaying your happiness into the future. I was, I was horrible at that. Like, there's nothing to celebrate. I'm not there yet. Damn it. And uh, it just doesn't work. And so, you know, the miracle is, I mean, we all have, you know, God's given me some gifts and my, my job here is to, uh, is to maximize those gifts. Hold on. Big sneeze. Um, my, my job is to maximize those gifts in service of other people. And there's also messy sides of me. There's, there's weaknesses. There's, there's things I'm not so good at. And, and I, I can have gifts, I can have talents, I can do things um, better than others, or just as good or whatever, and, and have those tips, those gifts and talents, but also have the messy side, and still deliver tremendous value. And my hope is, you know, I want to help 10s of millions of people have a better life and get unstuck. So, um, so embrace the good and the bad. And it's not about getting perfect. We didn't come here to get perfect. That's a, that's a, stupid uh thing to even think about so once i became my biggest fan cleaned up my internal self-talk and you know stop judging myself stop judging others you know practice forgiveness uh you know, all that stuff's in my book all these tremendous energy leaks i had 
um, because it's not it's not time management, it's energy management and and, and managing the energy and just going, you know what, I'm, I'm going to shore up some of the weaknesses. I'm going to maximize my gifts. I'm going to be my biggest fan and I'm not going to wait for my happiness. I'm going to show up in that space and deliver and it, it works out. So the miracle and the mess is uh, love the good, love the bad, all of it. Be your biggest fan. Now, with everything we've talked about so far, for the most part, has been around personal development, your journey personally. Now, I read that you, yes, am an Amazon bestselling author and a seven-figure entrepreneur. And what I would love, because this is definitely a, this, the person who's co-creating this episode with us now is in fact someone who's building a dream into a reality. And what I would love to know on their behalf is what are some things that you had to get unstuck about in business in order to have a particular degree of financial success in your business? Um, well, one is money. Um, you know, because I mean, you Google the word money and there's going to be plenty of information. And I was a CPA and financial advisor broke. I was broke. So I knew what to do, but I wasn't doing it. Mm. And so, so we all know what to do. Everyone knows what it why takes did you, to do. Okay, why did you not do it if you knew so? Because you are, I mean, you CPAs know, like you guys. No, there's a lot of broke, there's a lot of broke CPAs because, really? because, well, yeah, because it, it's all, it's, I mean, Asa beliefs are the star of the show and 96% of Americans are broke. We live yeah. in the richest country on the planet and most people are broke. Most, most, sure. entre most entrepreneurs are broke. Sure. So, so it's not that they don't know what to do. Right. I mean, I, I, I successfully advised tons of people, right. The cobbler's kid has no shoes, right. Um, it, it's, it's, I mean, we can go on and on and on, but this is what we know to do. And this is what we actually do. Mm -hmm. And the gap is our beliefs and anyone that's listening. If, if, if you don't have a good financial situation, you need to sit down. And one of my chapters in the book is, is uh, you know, you have a, you have a project, not a problem. And I had a coach who said, you don't have a money problem. You have a money project. And so you got, you got to figure out what's the thinking that's creating broke because there's me plus a thought equals a result. That's the, mm -hmm. the formula. So my result was broke and me. And so I sat down and I grabbed a journal and, and there's a lot of that stuff in my, in my book of like, what do you make up about this? What do you think about this? What's your story around this? And so I got programmed, as we all do, from our family that money wasn't a good thing, that rich people suck, that making money's hard, saving money's hard. All this, all this doesn't grow on trees, can't take it with you, won't make you happy. I mean, all this broke stuff. <laughs> and then as we and then as we grow up, wealth gets villainized in the media. It's even worse than ever. Yes. I mean, I'm dating myself, Gilligan's Island. Okay. I love Gilligan's What's, Island. Gilligan's Island, right? <laughs> so think about, think about, think about Thurston Howell and his wife. Yeah. Like clueless, aloof. Mm -hmm. Like they weren't even sure they were stranded. Right. <laughs> right? Just totally just, right? but that, that's how wealth got shown to us. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, we don't want to be them. Right. In, in, in Spider Man, right? The Green Goblin is a billionaire, mm -hmm. right? So, the movie, the Titanic was one of the worst movies on the planet. Yeah. Like the wealthy people are upstairs hating each other, grabbing babies to get on a boat. Meanwhile, all the broke people are downstairs, right? Drinking, having the party of their lives. Right. So, so we kind of get it, Asa, from all these sides. We get it from our family, right? That, that money's not good. And then we get programmed. And so I got it, but it wasn't until I was 37 that I sat down. I recommend every entrepreneur do this, write the word money down on a piece of paper and write down everything you make up about that word. 
Mm. And I share it in my book, everything I made up about it. And it was rich people are bad. They make money on the backs of poor people. Uh, you know, if you're out there and you're like, when you see somebody wealthy, do you judge them right away? Right? Usually there's judgment, man, that stuff's keeping your wealth away. My mom said money, you either have it or you don't like, we didn't even have a choice. Um, so I wrote down, I mean, I spent an hour on, I'm like, what do I think about this word? Hard to make, hard to keep. When's the shoe going to drop? You know, get it. It's hard to, and I met the enemy and it was I. And so all my beliefs around money were stopping me. 90% of lottery winners are dead, broke, or in jail inside of 10 years. Why? Are they stupid? No, it's belief systems. Yes. They just, they're not, they won't hold their wealth. All these athletes getting, you know, they get huge contracts. They're broke inside of 15 to 20 years. Um, anyway, and then I wrote a more empowering story, making and saving big money is easy. Um, money is the scorecard of value that I'm creating for other people. Uh, you know, if I'm growing personally, then my money's growing. I was talking to my entrepreneurs that I coach today. I'm like, guys, if your income's flat, you're flat. Uh, your income should be growing. If your income's not growing, you're not growing. So I, I connected money to service and growing. And so, yeah, that, that is, uh, and, and it's, a, it's actually a Billy Graham quote. It's in my book. Once somebody gets their attitude straight around money, it helps straighten out every area of their life. That was him. That was his quote. He wow. said it. And that's Billy Graham. He said it. Once somebody gets their attitude straight around money, it helps straighten out every area of their life. And what I had to shore up, and it's in my book, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. If you got forgiveness issues, you're probably going to be a broke mofo your whole life. That's what my coach told me. Forgive I your ex-wife or you're, or you're going to die a broke dude. Yeah, I tell people often, I post it often, and it's very, it's just one sentence, forgive everyone for everything. Like, just don't, you don't have to hold on to any of that. And I have, uh, and I adopted a quote about forgiveness from Oprah. It was about, on her show, and I don't remember if it was actually Oprah or someone she was interviewing, but the, the basis of it, the, the definition they gave was forgiveness is being able to look a person in the face, whether they're here on earth or not, and say, thank you for the experience you gave me. That, if you can do that, that's how you know, okay, I forgave them, or I'm pandering to the idea of forgiveness, or I'm tying it up in a nice little bow without actually going through that necessary, that process, or that decision to forgive them. No, can you thank them for the experience? I believe I really wholeheartedly agree with that because it's like, wow, I, I can, like, I don't, I no longer take, have you, um, have the power over what I experienced. Like it happened. It's done now. Now I'm good. You are where you are. And yeah, I'm, I survived it. I'm still here. You didn't kill me and everything's going to be okay. So as we begin to wrap up, I have two more questions for you as we begin to wrap up. Uh, the first question, very first question, is around you and everything that you've done so far. I'm always interested at what someone who is the Amazon bestseller, someone who's a seven-figure entrepreneur, someone who's grown their business, someone who has a company business that's growing, what lights you up now? Because you've done so many things and be able to acquire so many bulletized um, successes that other people are going towards. When you have so many yourself, what lights you up for about what's next? Yeah, I mean, uh, true fulfillment only comes from, from growth and contribution to other people. That's it. Uh, you, you're never going to find it in stuff. Um, I call it looking for love in all the wrong places. And mm -hmm. a lot of people are trying to look, look for love in all the wrong places. So, you know, when I turned 50, um, and there's a chapter in my book called you're too young to be old. And, uh, it, it's actually how like you're, you're the prime of your life is between 60 to 80 mm. and your, your third most productive time of your life is, is actually your fifties. So when I got, when I got energized on that, I just asked myself, what's, 
what's what's it, man, for the next however many, hopefully lots of decades in the words impact. So what lights me up? Impact. Um, impact, helping people get out of their own way, helping people get unstuck. It's why I do these podcasts. It's why I wrote the book. It's why I speak, do workshops and all that. I just, uh, I mm -hmm. love watching, you know, people get it and uh, get on the path of the life that they so deserve. So can't, uh, can't get enough of it. Got it. And our last question. So, Chris, has it been worth it? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm glad it has. And I'm so thankful that and grateful, grateful and thankful that you have chosen to spend time with us and the rest of our money cousins and Icon Nation and individuals from Icon University. Thank you for giving it to us like you you didn't sugarcoat anything <laughs> and I love that because a lot of times we don't always grow from the sugary sweet stuff um yep. we do it from the savory uh hearty aspects of life um that took a lot of ingredients to come to so I thank you for that uh for those of you who are interested in getting the book learning more about Chris uh reading the bio in his in the in its totality, please go to the show notes of this episode, regardless of the plat podcast platform that you are receiving this from. I promise you it's there. I would not allow episodes to go into the world without those specific things. Um, but is there a specific uh, place that you would like for people to engage with you uh, specifically? Yeah, uh, just uh, Chris Felton. That means the website. They can contact me there. Um, I have a weekly uh, email that I send out. Uh, it's kind of a vlog, just a video. It's called "Thank God It's Monday." That's the okay. that's the name of it. Um, so nice. they can uh, they can engage their Workshops going to be out here in the next couple of weeks. Excited about that. It's deep dive on the book and uh, yeah, just looking to help. Please reach awesome. out. Awesome. And thank you again. Thank you for showing up for those of you have co-created this episode thank you for being here you are definitely equally as important i honor your decision and as always i am asa laveau dreams and radical blessings <laughs>